I'm Diane Rowden, Hernando County Commissioner with awesome Hernando County. And today I'm sitting in here with our Manager of Tourism Development for Hernando County, Tammy Heon. And Tammy, um, it's a pleasure sitting here with you to talk about something that's really dear to our heart, and that, that is the Adventure Coast, and uh, that's Hernando County. So what I'd like to do is uh, turn this over to you so you can tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to Hernando County and uh, what we're doing for the Adventure Coast. Well, thank you, Commissioner Rowden. It's a pleasure for me to be here as well. It's kind of hard for me to believe. I've actually been here for just over five years now, um, and boy, has it been a busy five years. When I first arrived, we were known as Naturally Hernando, uh, one of the nine counties on the Nature Coast, um, with all kinds of exciting things to, to work on. As you know, we have recently completed our rebranding. We are now known as Florida's Adventure Coast Brooksville Wikiwachi. That was a a very large project for my department to work on and one that I had been looking forward to anxiously almost from the day I arrived. Um, it was pretty clear that we lacked a, a cohesive identity or brand if you will um, being one of the nine counties on the nature coast we didn't really have a, a great sense of place or um, a unique identity. Uh, which is why we underwent the rebranding process and uh, it was a very scientific process involving a lot of research, several rounds of surveying from prior guests as well as potential guests uh, and uh, a lot of data crunching if you will and from that came the name Florida's Adventure Coast, Brooksville Wikiwachi. The inclusion of the Brooksville and the Wikiwachi very much designed to give us that so important sense of place and then the Adventure Coast our own unique identity. I've had a lot of folks ask me if we're still part of the Nature Coast, and I say, of course, we're part of the Nature Coast. We just put a little adventure in it. Oh, that's great. And, you know, when we're talking about the Adventure Coast, let's start from the east side of the county um, and start talking um, about the experience that people can have when they come to Hernando County. Well, just about everything that we offer here is one form of adventure or another, which is why the name is so particularly appropriate for us. Uh, I'll start with one of our uh, most significant assets, the Withlacoochee State Trail. It's a nationally recognized recreation trail. It is a portion of what will become the Coast to Coast Connector. Uh, and uh, when we're all done with that project, the state will be connected coast to coast with bike and hike trails so that visitors can travel about at will. Of course, the Withlacoochee State Forest is famous for its bird watching as well as for uh, off-road bicycle trails, uh, horse trails, hiking. Uh, we've got a rookery over there, some incredible wildlife, and of course crew motorcycle area, which is 2,600 acres of trails and jumps and dust bowls for folks to get out with their ATVs and BMX bikes and just have a good time. Well, it, I know I've never been on um, one of the four-wheelers out there, but I've talked to people who have, and I guess a little bit younger people I would probably, <laughs> I, I think I would have, I enjoyed it um, Many years ago, I had a ATV with my kids, and we had a lot of fun. I lived in some acreage where we could ride it in uh, Pinellas County, but uh, I haven't been out on the trail here. I could probably try that. But Well, next time we have a fam tour, I'll invite you to come along. And um, you, if you're like the rest of the group that goes out, you'll come back quite dusty and dirty, but uh, having had a great time. That's great. And when we're talking about horseback riding we have a lot of opportunities for people to take their horses to um, one of our parks which is um, Lake Townsend Park. Lake Townsend Park is a great place to start your ride. There's plenty of parking there and the trail is right across the street where you can pick up the trailhead. There's also the yeah. Tucker um, Hill Tower uh, out in the Withlacoochee State Forest which is another place where a lot of uh, our horseback riders will gather to unload their equipment and saddle up and go for a beautiful ride. It is um, one of the ten coolest places you haven't heard of yet. Well, I've been there, so I've been to Lake Townsend. I haven't been to, is, what's it called? Lake? Tucker Hill. Tucker Hill. Well, that sounds pretty exciting. And then as we're moving um, 
toward Brooksville. We, we have other adventures, and one of those is something that the county recently acquired through the state, and we have the Friends of the Chinsicate that obviously that um, run that, but it's Chinsicate Hill. So, And again, as I've got listeners that might be tuning in, um, this is Diane Rowden with Awesome Hernando County, and I'm sitting here with our awesome manager of tourism development, Tammy Heon. So maybe you um, let's go back to Chinsicate Hill. Oh, sure. One of my favorite projects, um, watching Chinsicate Hill sort of come back to life, if you will, over the last two years has been a really awesome part of my job and um, an amazing experience, working with some really dedicated uh, folks in the Friends of Chinsicate Hill. They have, I would say, completed about 98% of the restoration of the manor house. The, about the only thing that isn't done right now is a few more period lighting fixtures need to be acquired. But the bulk of the manor house is completely restored. All new flooring, um, completely redone on the inside. The period furniture is back in place. It really is a breathtakingly beautiful place to go and visit. They are open for tours seven days a week. And uh, if you're a member of the Friends of Chinsigate Hill, your tour is at no charge. Otherwise, it's a, a mere $5 for a tour of the home. And you get to hear all of the history as well as see the antique furnishings and the china. And they've really done a beautiful job putting it back together. And they have a um, lot of weddings and different events out there, don't they, Tammy? They, they do. It's become a very popular wedding destination. It's such a beautiful setting, um, perfectly pristine. And um, so the bride coming down the staircase or using the front porch for their, for their entrance is quite uh, gorgeous. There's also a gazebo in the front yard, which makes a very pretty backdrop for a wedding. And then, of course, associated with the manor house is the Chinsigate Hill Retreat, where there are cottages that will sleep up to 56 people. And there's a small classroom and a full-service kitchen and dining hall as well. So folks can have their receptions on site, um, any sort of group booking that needs uh, peace and quiet, a little, little piece of uh, paradise, if you will, not too far from the rest of the world, but it seems uh, quite removed and, and very relaxing. It's perfect for yoga retreats or painters retreats. Photographers uh, just love being up on the hill. It's a beautiful place to go and catch an evening sunset. It is um, gorgeous and if you off to the side is property that's owned by, um, is it the it's, Ag, um, Ag owns that? It, All, it's the 3,000 acres where you can look down into the valley and I mean it's just Beautiful. That so. had been run by USDA. It's now being run by FAMU. Okay. Uh, and they've taken it over, and we are anxiously awaiting some uh, uh, more information about what they intend to do there. When they had their ribbon cutting, uh, I met with several of their professors up there, and they were showing me some of the research they're going to be doing up there with different types of grapes. They're very uh, in tune to um, increasing uh, the agricultural. Um, output of this area and what they can do for research up there. Well, it's great. And, and we'll keep moving a little farther west, and we are probably in the city of Brooksville, around the um, Brooksville, so we've got some Historic great downtown Brooksville, um, which is one of the prettiest small cities I've ever seen in my life. I love the fact that we still have those brick paved streets. Um, in fact, we just had the Cycle Classic, uh, where uh, every year hundreds of racers come to Brooksville for what has become one of the state championship races and to watch them tearing around the corners on those brick paved streets is uh, it's actually a little scary to me but um, <laughs> it's definitely high adrenaline um, but all of Brooksville has just such a unique sense of charm about it and of course we have the Maystringer Museum and we have the uh, depot train station uh, the trailhead for the Good Neighbor Trail, which will also be connected as part of the Coast to Coast Connector uh, as the progress moves forward on that. So I'm hoping to see um, the connecting piece coming in from the west sort of go right through the center of downtown, if you will, and really bring some of the economic impact of that trail and what its completion is going to mean for the city. 
and that is wonderful. And while we're talking about the city, let's go ahead and talk about what's coming this weekend at the, with the Blueberry Festival. And we also have the fair, so let's uh, talk about them both. Well, I'm very fond of saying there's always something happening in Brooksville, and this weekend is probably the weekend uh, of something happening. The Florida Blueberry Festival will be in its fifth year. Uh, I understand organizers are expecting as many as 100,000 people this year. It is one of the most fun events uh, I've ever attended or worked at for that matter. It's two days of all things blueberry, whether you're looking for a blueberry pie or blueberry characters where you can get your, your picture taken with them. This year there'll be a thousand foot water slide going down the hill. I, I'm going to be on that slide before the weekend's over for I'm sure. supposed to be monitoring it. I'm with Kwana, so... <laughs> I'll be waving at you as I go by at a high rate of speed. Well, they were going to have me test it, be the first one to test it to see if it worked. I go, no, it's okay. Well, and there's an incredible lineup of entertainment that goes on throughout the entire weekend. The festival runs 10 to 10 on Saturday and then 10 to 4 on Sunday. And the dates are... Um, it's April the 15th and 16th? Actually, 16th and 17th. 16th and 17th. Uh, yes, okay. Saturday, April 16th through Sunday, April 17th. And uh, the headliner this year is a Leonard Skinner tribute band, uh, which should be great fun. And they play both Saturday evening and Sunday afternoon. There are always street performers uh, out and about. And there's a terrific kids area with uh, lots of um, games and rides of a... Uh, a nature that are safe for smaller children, um, in case that you don't want to put the little ones on that uh, flying. Um, what is it? The flying slide? No. no the the water slide. Well, yeah, the water <laughs> slide. <laughs> for the more tame at heart. Uh, but there's a, a great amount of entertainment for everyone. Um, in addition to that Led Zeppelin tribute band I mentioned to you, there's the Greg Billings Band, Skylar Clark, Soul Circus Cowboys, who are always great fun, uh, Rock and Gypsy Blues, the Nerdy Noah Show. I'm not quite sure what that one's all about, but I'll have to go check it out. Of course, our uh, famous belly dancers will be in attendance. Beatnik Brent will be around, as uh, will Acoustic Roots and uh, the Euphoria Emporium Jam Band on well, Sunday afternoon. Well, it sounds afternoon. like we're going to have some excitement for the weekend. And um, again, I'm, I'm sitting here with Tammy Heon, and she's our management of tourism development for Hernando County. And we're talking about the Adventure Coast and what an awesome place it is. And we just were talking about the Blueberry Festival that's going to be um, going on this weekend, April 16th and 17th. And if you're coming into town, there's plenty of locations that they're going to have remote parking. And I know that over in the public shopping area off of um, the truck bypass, there'll be areas over there that people can park. And I'm sure if you have any questions, you can call uh, the city of Brooksville, and they'll, they'll have the answers for you on the parking. But we're also, at the same time this weekend, we have the fair going on at the fairgrounds. So it's kind of a joint effort, I think, this year that they're working on. Right, Amy? Absolutely. It's, and it's a terrific weekend because you can either go to the fair and then go to the festival, or you can go to the Blueberry Festival, and then when you're done there, go and check out the fair. There's actually a combination ticket that's available for both events if you go online. And if you want to buy your tickets ahead of time, that's floridablueberryfestival.org. You'll also get a complete schedule of entertainment and other things that are happening at the festival there. And then it's really terrific to see the fair and the festival um, collaborating and working together on their marketing and their promotions this year. It gives everybody an opportunity to really do it all, if you will. And um, if you're like me, you want to make sure you get to do it all because you don't want to miss any of the fun. Well, that's great. I, I think the weather's supposed to hold out for us, so that would be great. I have put in the order for two days of sunshine and slightly breezy, perfectly balmy weather. Oh, there we go. Okay. So um, <laughs> if, if the big guy upstairs is listening, I've, I've made my request. We, we have our request, <laughs> and, and that's great. And we'll come back to that at the end. But you know, I want us to move um, more west um, in Hernando County. And uh, I think we have a, a great uh, park right there on Highway 50 and 19 that's been here since probably, I think, 19 
1947 or earlier is when they did the underwater theater there. Yes. Nine, and uh, that's Wikiwachi Springs. Yes. Uh, Wikiwachi Springs, uh, home of the world famous mermaids, has been a state park for a few years now. Um, launched in 1947 by a fellow named Newton Perry, who was a Navy diver. And he had a vision of pretty women swimming in the spring. Um, so he acquired the land and now they have handsome men too though yes they do <laughs> we're, we're blessed that we have mer mermaids and mermen now um, but the, the the park was launched many many years ago and um, ran very successfully as a private business for many years with a couple of different owners including ABC television for a while and uh, when ABC uh, decided to move on the community sort of sprang into action to raise money and help keep the the park alive and at that point they approached the state about making the park one of the state parks which really uh, has worked out beautifully and secured the park's future. Uh, we actually have one of our two visitor information centers located inside Wikiwachi Springs State Park. We're tucked inside uh, one corner of the gift shop so if you're uh, on that side of the county and you need visitor information or a map of the county or what have you, you can just come in and say hello and see us and we can provide you with all the information you need. And they do a great job in there. And, and just to give you a little more of the history of, of uh, Wikiwachi, it actually was when the state bought it, it was owned by the city of St. Petersburg. And the city of St. Petersburg's whole idea was one of these days they would be able to pump that water all the way to St. Pete. So I'm glad that that isn't happening. And I'm, I was <laughs> on the county commission when the uh, state and uh, Swift Mud and they all got together and decided that it was time that we make sure that the future of that park was stable with what it is and, and in Hernando County which is it's a, a fabulous um, visit and something that people you think wow women swimming underwater now men like I said but to give you a little, another little history, the uh, Wikiwachi is actually, there's only two cities in uh, Hernando County, Brooksville and Wikiwachi. And the reason that Wikiwachi with their seven residents was made a city is so that they could get on the map. And there was no way the state would put them so that they would, people would know how to get to Wikiwachi. So that's how we ended up with the uh, city of Wikiwachi. Well, and I will let you know that their population is all the way up to nine now. Oh, okay. <laughs> we got nine. <laughs> so, and they have um, something that's really great that people enjoy. Uh, they, they have paddling adventures, which is where you can rent the kayaks. But if you also go out to Wikiwachi and you've got the kayak shack and there's a couple of other um, kayak rentals that come up to the top of the uh, river there and they drop in the kayaks and then they go with the stream down river and then they give them a ride back to the park. Is that right? Absolutely. And I have to tell you that um, kayaking on the Wikiwachi is one of the my favorite things that I get to do at work whenever we have travel riders come into town. Day one is always kayaking the Wikiwachi River in the morning. Um, and that's such an easy paddle. The river moves you along at about five miles an hour because of all of the millions of gallons of water pouring forth from the spring head every day. So it's a nice easy paddle down and then we get picked up and shuttled back so we don't have to work too hard but uh, there's breathtaking scenery and um, complete with an eagle's nest strategically placed on one curve in the river <laughs> um, so that when we go around the corner if everybody's behaving properly and cued uh, the eagle's there for the rider to see as we come around. And occasionally we'll find a, a very small baby alligator in there. Nothing scary again plenty of waterfowl and wildlife and it's just such a breathtakingly beautiful it is experience beautiful. And, and when you're saying that the water travels pretty fast it does so you have to be really aware of with that paddle in the water because you could end up on the side in a hung up on a log I've done that before so I use my paddle most of the time just for staying just out for of the steering. trees <laughs> exactly <laughs> 
Then um, after we paddle in the morning, of course, we have lunch, and then we, I take all the riders to see the world-famous mermaids, and um, which is still such an incredibly unique experience. Nowhere else in the world will you find a class one spring with a theater submerged in it and live mermaids swimming a minimum of three shows a day, seven days a week. It's, it's a unique treasure for Florida's Adventure Coast. And we've had some famous people meet come to Wikiwachi. I think Elvis Presley, that's the best one I can think of. Elv Elvis Presley was uh, there. And he sure was. The, the, the park has been host to many a star in its uh, various uh, time frames. Most recently, uh, Larry the Cable Guy was there a few years back, and, and he put on a tail and got in the spring with the mermaids. Um, it was quite a sight. I bet. <laughs> well, and, and again, to remind our listeners, I'm sitting here, we're talking about the Adventure Coast, and I'm with Tammy Heon, and she's the manager of tourist development for Hernando County, and we have had some tremendous growth in our tourism in the last couple of years. So, Tammy, why don't you talk a little bit about that and how this is certainly um, helping the economy in Hernando County, but also, you know, the fact that we have more and more people that are recognizing the Adventure Coast. Absolutely, and again, the, the whole purpose of the rebranding was to help folks um, have that sense of place about where to come and where to find us. And it's really paying off beautifully. We've seen all of our numbers go up. Um, we've been up on occupancy, um, ADR, which is average daily rate, um, and REVPAR, which is uh, revenue per average available room. Those are the three main uh, tracking numbers, if you will, in the hotel industry. But those three numbers, along with my tourism tax revenues, we've been watching them go up just about nonstop for about 36 months. But I've seen some real exponential growth since we did the rebranding and the new name has been getting out there and capturing people's attention and their imagination and bringing people to town. And it's really gratifying. Um, on some level, my job is to market Hernando County as a vacation destination, but I really look at, at the end of the day, my job is to help build people's businesses and help create jobs. And tourism is the fastest growing industry in um, not just Florida, but for the entire country in terms of adding new jobs. Um, we made uh, over 105 million visitors to the state of Florida this past year. And um, we saw some really phenomenal numbers here in Hernando County. At the moment, our um, tourism tax revenues are up 20% uh, year over year. Boy. So that's a pretty that's significant very, increase. Very, very good. That's yes. very good. And, and when we're talking about our tourism and we're heading west again, we're um, out at Hernando Beach. And I know that one of the things that people don't realize is that there is such a um, sports fishing um, love out there. I mean, I think one of the big ones is tarpon fishing. And then we also have scalloping season that comes, which is very big. So maybe you can talk about those two and if you're, there's others that you want to add to that, go ahead, Tammy. Oh, sure. Well, we did have a world record tarpon caught off of Hernando Beach several years ago now, but there's a, a great monument to it at the entrance to the beach. Um, and we also do very well with both grouper and... Um, I know one of the ones is with they gig, it's hogfish, and Brian's place out the, on Hernando Beach love serving hogfish so they do gig a lot of those and I have flounder it, oh you have to go try <laughs> brian's hogfish <laughs> flounder is the other one i was trying to think of there for a moment um i, I my i was actually my it's all right we're talking about our flounder and our hogfish it got her tongue tied here <laughs> exactly. talking about we started out with tarpon so <laughs> Well, and my personal favorite is the scallop diving. Um, I love to get in the water. 
So, uh, and scalp diving is a huge business for Hernando County in the summertime. All of our west side businesses do very, very well. Usually starts the when does that season last start? weekend in June. It, technically, it's usually July 1st, but the governor tends to let us open the season a few days earlier so we can capture one more weekend of uh, bed taxes and folks come into town to stay in the hotels and eat in the restaurants and such. And then it runs through uh, generally mid to late September. Um, so we get about two and a half months. Of and that's very, very big. And because the, I, what people don't realize if unless you live in Hernando County is that it's very shallow in Hernando Beach it goes out pretty far before and our canal we have to had our canal um, made it deeper so the boats wouldn't have as much problem getting out there but it's it's shallow and by the being shallow that is makes it better for harvesting the scallops because that's what you have to do is walk out and find the scallops on it's a very, very easy, very family-oriented, uh, um, fun activity. You don't really need anything special in terms of equipment um, or special boats or what have you. I mean, you can scallop dive in, in four feet of water. Oh, yeah, and you can just reach down and pick them up. I did that when I was very little, and my parents would come up here from St. Pete. So you got to be quick, though. They jump pretty fast. They jump. <laughs> Scallops <laughs> jump. They jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm trying to see this rock jumping. <laughs> well, that's what I refer to it as. They sort of scoot, if oh, you will. Oh, scoot, they okay. Scoot, they okay. try to scoot away from you, so you have to be quick, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun to get out there and go diving for them or, or wading for them, if you prefer, and um, great family fun activity here on the Adventure Coast. Well, and that, again, out on Hernando Beach is that because it's shallow there's a lot of flats fishing that people can do you know that's where you get your uh, flounder and different fish uh, red snapper i guess that and that you can really kind of take your kayak if you have a kayak a fishing kayak and you can go along you can put in at jenkins creek over there or you can go even um, at Hernando Beach, you can put your kayak out there. So There are plenty of places to, to go fishing or kayaking off of the Adventure Coast. Not only do we have the major boat ramps at um, Hernando Beach and then over at Bayport Park. Oh, Bayport's beautiful uh, over but, there. And there's a dedicated kayak and canoe launch at Bayport. You can launch at... Uh, as you said, Jenkins Creek, as well as Linda Pedersen, actually has a handicapped um, access for boat ramp there, which is incredible. Uh, not very many folks have those. And uh, not only can you do the flats fishing, as you mentioned, but if you want to get out a little deeper and do something else, we have a variety of boat captains and tour guides out of Hernando Beach. And they'll do um, just about anything you want to do in terms of whether you want to go fishing for grouper or snapper or tarpon, or if you want to go scalp diving, if you want to take a sunset cruise or a nature cruise. And you can find all of their contact information on our website. Just click under Water Adventures and then uh, into the fishing and boating area, and you'll find listings of all of our captains and our kayak outfitters and such. Well, I just consider Hernando County kind of a hidden jewel to people who are looking for an adventure. And when you're talking about Hernando Beach, I mean, there's things out there that people are just in awe, like they go out there, wow, I didn't even know this existed. And then they get out there and pretty soon, lo and behold, they bought a house and they moved right here to Hernando Beach. So. Well, there's a reason 2,000 people a day move to Florida and it's because they come for a vacation and they have the time of their life and then they don't want to leave. That's how I got here. And then you can also <laughs> look at the weather station in the winter time and you can say why you don't want to be still up in the northeast and that's where you're from you're from new hampshire yes tammy right yes. new and england born and raised but very very happy to be a floridian now and i have to tell everybody buddy, our hidden secret is that <laughs> we were traveling back on the same flight you were coming back from new hampshire when you were first coming to hernando county and my husband jay happened to be sitting by you and that's how the story is that we met Tammy before she came to Hernando County. It was uh, it was sort of fate, I think. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, it's been wonderful talking to you today, Tammy, about our Adventure Coast, and I appreciate all that you are doing to 
bring attention to what we have here in Hernando County so everybody can enjoy it. And um, one thing I did want to just ask you real quick, I know that um, the county, we, we have a, what we call the Mermaid Trail um, that's going to be coming up soon. And can you give us a little idea of when that's going to happen and a little, maybe just a 30 seconds about this? Oh, sure. Um, uh, we are looking at building the website for starters. Um, as we move into the summer months, we'll be launching that project. And before it's all done, I'd actually like to see a trail of statuary around the county as well. Um, but we're going to start by um, building the, the website that has the Florida Mermaid Trail. And we'll have listings for all of our businesses and partners that are, have some sort of involvement with mermaids, uh, as well as, of course, our world-famous park. And then we'll have a place for folks to submit their own photographs and stories and such. So it's going to be a very interactive experience and a lot of fun. And maybe we can intertwine our kayak trail that we're working on with our mermaids. We can have statues out there. And hey, you never know. It's always a new adventure on the Adventure Coast. So. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you again, Tammy. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the Blueberry Festival. Well, and I look forward to seeing you and all of your listeners uh, come out and play. It's going to be a wonderful weekend. And this is awesome Hernando County, the Adventure Coast. Thank you.